Hello everyone. I rarely have talked about microphones on Real Home Recording, and I'm only doing this because this is the first Real Home Recording premium video, and I think it's great to start off with a bang and talk about what I've been pretty much silent about. Over the years, I've only mentioned, I think, four microphones total out of my collection of 16 microphones. I have a mid-level studio, maybe low mid-level, $4,500 worth of microphones total. The uh, l cheapest microphone goes for $35 brand new, and the most expensive one goes for $530 brand new. Used, of course, you can get them a lot cheaper, probably slice that number in half. Um, but regardless, I do have a pretty big mic collection for somebody who does this on an, I wouldn't call it an amateur level, maybe prosumer level. I do video professionally, so I need quality microphones. But as far as recording music's concerned, I definitely have not made a career out of it. I would have loved to, but... I haven't done that yet. So without further ado, let's get started on the microphones. First, I'm going to go over the ones that I've already mentioned on videos prior to this. Uh, the first two, actually, I'm, I'll, let me just go one at a time. First mic, these are the same mic. This is a Shure SM57. This one has a windscreen on it, the AWS, the AW2S. Yeah, A2WS windscreen, and this one does not. This is a hundred dollar microphone. We have two of them, they are great for snare drum, underside snare drum. If you don't have the better microphone that typically is used for that purpose, which I think is a um, it's a Sennheiser 44 1. Or is that a Shure? I'm not, I can't remember. I don't, I don't own the microphone, but I've been told that's the better microphone to use. But if you, if you have two of these, which is what we do, we, we put two of these on the snare and uh, it sounds pretty good. The guitar amp, this distorted guitar mainly, but it can be clean as well. The SM57 gets used on the guitar and it sounds great. I've used the SM57 on acoustic guitar. I don't particularly like the way it sounds because it just doesn't pick up all the transients like it should. It doesn't sound clear. It doesn't pick up the high end because it's limited. But for a spot mic, for you know not having anything else laying around, it, it, it did okay. SM57 I use on vocals. Um, I record stuff coming out of my speakers with the SM57. This is a ridiculously versatile microphone. I think people have used it on hi-hats. Um, it's the presidential podium microphone in the United States, President Obama, and, uh, and all the presidents prior to him up to, I think, Nixon used this microphone. And it, it just has so many uses, it's not funny. Okay, the next microphone is the Audio-Technica AT4040. This microphone is a large diaphragm condenser microphone. It's phantom powered and it has a low cut filter as well as a 10 decibel pad. It runs for about $300 and we have two of them because we needed them for uh, two purposes. Acoustic guitar recording. This is when we, when we were originally making Studio B's microphone uh, purchase plan. We had um, we needed to do stereo miking for acoustic guitar as well as drum overheads and possibly vocals. This thing does it all. Um, I've used it on all kinds of sources. I use it as my clean, um, clean electric guitar mic I use it now as a drum room mic in a stereo fashion and like I said we have two of these they, they match pretty well as far as frequency response is concerned and I recommend the SM57 and the AT4040 as your de desert island microphones if all you can afford are these two microphones the SM57 and this, the AT4040, get them. You'll be happy. You can record all kinds of things with the combination of these two microphones with your home studio. I 
would never sell this microphone. I mean, it just sounds good on a variety of sources. You know, when the SM57 doesn't sound good, this one will. So uh, I don't have any complaints about it. Like I said, um, I use I use this for overheads on drums and and room mics. So on to the next mic. Oh, I should mention the Audio Technica AT4040 comes with this nice little case here. It also comes with and I don't have it to show you on camera here, but it comes with a cover, a dust cover. And I do have this sitting around. This is a uh, shock mount for the mic. So it comes with the full kit, the full kit and caboodle. <laughs> um, but yeah, they, they definitely don't uh, spare expense, even though it's an affordable microphone, they do give you a lot of stuff. Audio Technica is good with that. They're, they they have quality products and they don't skimp. They don't cut corners. Okay, now I'm going to get to the first microphones that I bought way back when. I, I should say, I should have said this earlier, but I've collected microphones over the past uh, 12 to 13 years. Yeah, so two yeah 2002, so about 12 years. And these were the two, first two microphones I ever got. This is the Marshall MXL 603S and the Marshall MXL, am I holding that right? Marshall MXL 2001P. And I'm going to get them out of the boxes now, very carefully. Uh, one is a large diaphragm condenser microphone. As you'll, I mean, I, obviously you'll see which one's the large one. And this one, the 603S, I should do this on camera 603s comes with a case as you saw it came, it came with this windscreen this is what it looks like without anything on it now let me tell you this I got this microphone modified by Michael Jolly Michael Jolly modifies cheap Chinese microphones and he made this thing sound better than it than it used to it, this is a good mic out of the box I, I won't say I, I won't deny that but what he did to this mic this thing now sounds better than my previous go-to acoustic mic, which I'll get to in a few minutes. But this little baby I used for hi-hat. It's my go-to acoustic guitar microphone. Uh, it's the primary one. I use this as a uh, overhead mic. When, when, I, when I don't have my lavalier microphone on, I use this above people's heads to record interviews. And there goes my light. So I'm going to have to continue this video in a couple hours. As I was saying three hours ago, the MXL 603S modified by Michael Jolly. It's my go-to hi-hat microphone now. It is my primary acoustic guitar microphone. I will use this on a variety of sources. It sounds great on voice. It sounds, uh, if I had two of these, I'd use it on piano, if I recorded piano. This is just a very good microphone now. Um, it's supposed to simulate or get close to the sound of a Neumann KM-184 or KM-84. Um, but, you know, overall, I think it was, with the upgrades, it was like three or four hundred dollars. So, it, you know, it transformed a fifty dollar microphone into a... $800 microphone. Very, very cool. I wish I had another one, but you know. On to the MXL 2001P. This came in a set with the 603S and it it did me well. It, it, took, a, it took a spill. It's got a little dent in the grill, but you know, it still works. I haven't used this thing in probably, I would say over seven years now. And, you know, it's because I, I have better microphones now. But this one served me well over 12 years ago. It was the first condenser microphone that I ever bought. And um, I'm actually going to do a shootout with this thing one day against the AT4040, which I'm just going to, for comparison purposes, <laughs> it's pretty neat. Little longer headstock or whatever you want to call that. The grill's bigger. Um, you know, 
Anyway, one's made in Japan, the other one's made in China. One's one's 300 bucks or 350 at the time, and the other one's 100. So you know, you gotta pay for quality if you want it. But it wasn't too bad for the time. And considering uh, the shitty mixing board that I had at the time, it made up for the the muddy sounding preamps on that thing. Cause that thing was uh, that thing did not sound good on dynamic microphones. So moving on. This is the mother of all microphones. <laughs> Uh, on the back of the box here, it says America's number one selling professional vocal microphone. Is it the best? I wouldn't say it's the best, but pretty much everybody I know has one of these. Um, the SM58 is essentially an SM57 with a grill on it, with a ball ball pop filter. And I, oh man, I gotta dig into it again. I'm gonna show you what this looks like uncapped next to an SM57 to, to show you what I'm talking about. So here's the 57 on your right and the 58, I'm gonna unscrew it. Hopefully it won't fall. Okay. So if you look, it looks pretty familiar, doesn't it? Yeah. It's pretty much the same damn thing. So if I run out of 57s, I just unscrew the cap, which gets rid of, rid of some of the harshness, um, you know, and opens up the sound a little bit. And we're in business, so it wasn't a complete waste of money. And um, you know, it works. It works. It works for live vocals. It works for again snare drum, electric guitar. You know, you can throw this thing, you, you can you can use it as a hammer, they say, and it, and it, it still works. Um, it takes a beading, that's why people love these things, because they're a hundred bucks, and they take a beading. Okay, next up is my... I don't know if it's my favorite, but it's my original small diaphragm condenser microphone that we got for Studio B. And I liked it so much... That I bought my own. <laughs> so we had two of these microphones as well. You know, I have two AT4040s and, and two SM81s, short SM81s. The 81s are known for being a go to acoustic guitar microphone, a um, great on the hi hat, great on overheads, which is what I mostly use it for these days. Um, again, acoustic guitar, I can do stereo recordings with, all kinds of uses for this microphone. Um, I don't really use it on vocals, but I guess you could, and it's worth a try. I, I don't, I don't really, um, I guess it's, that's pretty much all the uses that I use it for. I, hi-hat, I used to use it for until I got my uh, 603S upgraded and I, I got another one of the um, SM81s. So now these are my go-to overhead microphone for drums. And I'm trying to think of any, oh, violin. I've used this on violin. I might use this, the modified 603S on violin because I didn't have it modified at the time, but the, the SM81 was my go-to violin microphone. I should mention some of the issues that I have with this mic. And that's the, the, the pad. It, it has a pad, this ring right here. You can change it from 0 to negative 10 decibels. And then the low cut filters. Um, somebody did some investigative work on uh, one of the message boards I participate in. And they said that you really should keep the pad on this thing at 0. And uh, one guy even removed the thing out of the path, out of the signal path. So, uh, yeah, just a heads up. But I like it, you know, for if, if you use this thing on the stage, it, uh, it's got a low cut filter built in, it's got the pad built in, but even on drum overheads, I will set this thing on zero and pad it. Um, but usually it's not an issue because the other problem I have with this mic is the output on it is very low. So you need 
a clean preamp. You need something that ideally can go above 60 decibels of gain. But if it just goes at 60 decibels, you should be okay as long as it doesn't have a lot of noise. Um, so the, that's the only thing I don't like about these mics. So, but again, for for overheads, I love them. I love these for drum overheads and hi hat. These I've seen these. Um, they were mentioned. They were rec they were recommended several times in all the readings that I did. So I, we got them for hi hat and we got them for uh, acoustic guitar. Originally in the in the original purchase for Studio A microphones. All right, I'm I'm excited to talk about this one. This is the Shure SM7B. You might have seen this microphone in the movie Psycho 4 <laughs> or on um, the show Loveline or all kinds of different radio shows. This is a standard radio microphone. It is great for vocals, voiceover work. It can double as a snare drum microphone if you don't have an SM57 to use. It sounds good on guitar amps. It's essentially a better SM57. It goes for 350 bucks. It is all attached. This cable goes right into the XLR. That's, uh, if you can see that, I don't know if you can see that or not. XLR cable goes right in there. And then um, these you can adjust so that you can change the mic like this. And then on the back, we have these filters. Um, for what I've been told, the, the actual like out of signal path is the, the boosted signal. If you have it on the flat, everything flat, the, uh, the mid boost is actually a mid cut. So, and the, uh, the low cut filter. I, again, I don't typically use these because I, I find that having hardware filters aren't as good as software low cut filters or the ones, um, on the on the mixing board I'm pulling hairs off the foam oh I should show you that off camera I'm taking this grill off it's a little bit difficult to do so give me a second okay so I have seen this microphone um, Metallica used this during the recording of uh, St. Anger and I also saw Korn using it like this with the grill off I use it with the grill off when I'm when I'm recording guitar amps just so I, don't, I have less of an issue. This this mic also comes with a uh, a closer pop filter, but I like to use the standard one with everything I, I do. But like I said, I use this. This this is the microphone you have heard since day one of Real Home Recording. This is my voiceover microphone. I like it for my voice because I don't think, I have a thin sounding voice, I have a very sibilant sounding voice, and it works great for that. The only vocals I've heard that, that I didn't like on this microphone was um, I had a guy come in and he, doing um, rapping, and he had a very deep voice, and he did not sound good on, on the SM7B. Uh, I stuck him with a mic I'm gonna talk about in, in, in a second, but the 7B, Again, that is my go-to voiceover microphone. I love it, and you've heard it. If you've watched any real home recording video, you've heard the SM7B in action. It's a great microphone. Highly recommend it. It's not that expensive. Um, you know, make it make it. It's 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 a mic you won't get rid of. And if you do get rid of it, it's got a pretty high resale value. All right, you guys have seen this before. This is the the EV, the Electro Voice ND767A. Sounds like an airplane. Um, I don't really use this in the studio, but I'm going to show it to you anyway because technically it is a part of my mic collection. It comes with a clip. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, a bag and a clip. And somebody didn't give me my clip back, so I got another clip. Long story, and I'm still a little mad about that. <laughs> and every time I lend people my stuff, it never comes back in the right condition. Okay, so what do I use this for? I use this microphone for live vocals. I use it for interviewing people when I'm shooting video. This mic has, it, it has a condenser-like sound, and it's very, very directional. And I love that because... 
I can record people when there's music going on or there's a lot of crowd noise and it isolates their voice really, really well. The only problem I ever ha I have with it is even though it has a built-in pop filter, it still isn't enough. So I bought this. This is actually the, the windscreen for the Shure SM58, um, but it fits this mic perfectly well. I'm still considering buying the official electro voice one because i just don't like the the gray i wish this was a black windscreen um but besides that this is a great little microphone i mean i guess i technically could you could use like on, on the underside of a snare drum it, it would probably sound okay it would probably sound better than the sm57 on acoustic guitar because again it has it, it picks up the higher frequencies better even though it's a, di a dynamic microphone um, but yeah, I don't really use it in the studio ever, but maybe I should try, but live vocals, it's a killer microphone. Um, it's better than the SM58 in my opinion for most people. And be especially if, if you have a small stage, it really comes in handy because it's super cardioid. I definitely recommend it Or uh, it's bigger brother. I think it's called the nine, six, seven, a. But it's, it has like a flat grill, a little bit higher quality than this one, but this one's cheaper. I think it goes for $130. So uh, I'm going to move on to the next microphone now. Okay, coming up next is my most expensive microphone in the entire collection. And ironically, it's my, most, it's my least used microphone. I rarely pull this thing out. Uh, for a variety of reasons I'm about to get into. First of all, it comes with this like power drill looking case. It's like, you know, <laughs> it's either a small guitar or it's a, um, a, a chainsaw case. I mean, some kind of power tool. And uh, it, it comes with, I'm just gonna pull everything out just because it's insane. It comes with its, with its own power supply because it's a tube microphone. Oh, by the way, all this stuff, with the exception of what I'm about to show you, comes uh, standard. This, I had to buy separately, I think for 60 bucks. This is the shock mount, because what it comes with is essentially useless. Um, I don't even know if I have that thing anymore. I'll show this is a, uh, oh, here it is. This is what it comes with. I never even took this thing out of the bag. It's like, really? It's it's a little stand adapter, but it's not a shock mount, so any little bit of floor rumble is gonna come into the mic, and plus positioning, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's kind of a pain in the ass, so the, the shock mount is pretty much a must have. Um, so now, finally, I didn't wanna show you the cables. It's just a power cable and an AC cable. Here is the Rode NTK. Beautiful bronze or gold looking microphone. I would say it's gold. And uh, it's it's a tube microphone. You know, it's it, it, it's a genuine tube microphone. I don't know if it, um, some people have said if you replace the tube, it does sound better, which I think is one of the reasons why I don't use it because it, it has a harsh sound to it on voices. And that's what I, I record, you know, 75 to 80% of the time. I'm recording people, and I have the SM7 for that. So this one kind of gets relegated to my, uh, my closet. <laughs> so I took off the front of this thing to show you the tube, which is kind of neat. Um, you know, you power this thing on for a half hour at, the, at minimal. I tend to do 45 minutes to an hour so that it doesn't affect the sound quality. It, you know, it stays consistent. Um, I This microphone does sound good, even though it has a harsh tone to it with the with the tube microphone, or with, with the tube that it comes with. Oh, crap. Let me, let me put this together off camera. <laughs> the NTK has a very open sound to it. it. It has like this, it's hard to describe the way it sounds. I'm so used to hearing the SM7B um, 
which I love the way it sounds, but it, the SM7B kind of has this closed off sound to it. The NTK sounds a lot more alive, for lack of a better word. It, it just, there's a tonality to it that I do like that the, uh, the, the AT4040 condensers don't have, the, uh, the SM81s don't have. There's something about this mic that makes it sound more professional, more expensive. I, I don't know what it is. I, I can't describe it other, other, than, other than those um, adjectives. But, you know, like I said, I don't use it a lot, of, a lot. I don't know if it's because I'm afraid of breaking it or I just don't like the sound quality. Maybe I should start using it more. Um, I know that other studios use this mic, uh, obviously for vocals. Oh, I used it on the rapper that I was talking about earlier who had a really deep voice because this this microphone is known to not sound good on harsh voices. And his voice was far from harsh. It was very, very muddy sounding. And I put this mic in front of him and he sounded great on it. So it definitely came in handy that day. <laughs> um, acoustic guitar. Unfortunately... I like to mic acoustic guitars up in stereo, and I only have one Rode NTK, so maybe one day I'll, I'll record um, acoustic guitar just with a mono mono uh, mic, just 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 a Rode NTK and see how it sounds. I haven't really tested it on a lot of other things, just vocals. And one time we tested acoustic guitar, and I ended up not using it. But um, like I said, <laughs> I paid 530 bucks for the thing. And I rarely use it, but it does sound nice. And, you know, I, I guess I regret not using it more. So maybe I'll use it more. Who knows? We'll see, right? <laughs> Up next, I have a collection of Audix drum microphones. It's the DP5A set that you can buy. I think it goes for, let me look at my notes so I don't say this wrong. $660. I don't remember what we got them for. I don't. I don't think it was that expensive. But um, this is probably something that you could buy used that you could save a lot of money on. But what I like about these mics, they're they're specifically for. Um, they're good for live use because they're super cardioid, but they're tailored specifically for drums, so that you don't have to do too much EQing. Or that's what they say they are, but I don't know about that. So it comes with this cool little road road case, as you can see. Um, and I opened it already, so I don't want to, I don't want to, eh, I guess I can show it to you. Hopefully it won't fall out. So there we go. Now I'm missing the i5. The i5 is out for repair. <laughs> um, long story on that one. I'm not even going to get into it, but all right. So first we had the Audix D6 kick drum microphone, also good on bass cabinets. I like it, it sounds good, and that's that. Next up we have the D2, um, small tom and medium tom microphone. Also good for trumpet and some other stuff, I forget what Audix says on their website. I have, I have a second D2, so this, this, comes with, this comes with two D2 microphones for each tom. The medium and the high time, or small time, whatever you want to call it. And then it comes with a floor tom microphone, the D4. And people have used this on um, the kick as well, and on bass cabinets as well. It has a better uh, extended lower end response, but I got a D6. But a D4, I guess, is good for that purpose as well. I like it. it, it this, this set comes with um, clamps that you can put on the drums and you can set them very easily and they, they're they good sounding microphones. I, I don't regret getting them. Now, if you're on a budget, you can use nothing but SM57s. Perfectly good substitute because these mics I think are like 115 bucks each if you buy them separately. Um, Oh, I can't believe I skipped that. Good time to talk about cheap microphones now, actually. This is the very first professional microphone I ever got. This is like, this is before the MXL mics. I 
This is the Electro Voice Cobalt CO4. Yeah, so it comes with a clip and that plastic shell case that you just saw. It's an SM57 ripoff. <laughs> That's essentially what it is. It's an instrument microphone, but it also works for um, for voice. And it's not too bad. 35 bucks. You can, uh, I think they're like 70 and you get two for right now. I I've seen that deal for a long time on uh, various websites. And like I said, everything I said about the 57 pretty much applies to this mic, except I wouldn't necessarily recommend this one over that because the resale on this mic is shit compared to the uh, the 57. But you do get a better case, I will say that. I have a few other microphones to get through. I'm gonna do some quick ones right now. This is the the microphone that comes with um, IK Multimedia ARC2 or ARC1, either one. Um, it's the omnidirectional condenser microphone. It's a measurement microphone, it's flat, it's uh, and even though it's it's flat response, it still sounds good. I've used it for a few things, acoustic guitar and vocals. Um, I don't use it that often, but it's there if I need it. And uh, let's see, next we have my original kick drum microphone. This is, I got this after I got the MXL mics. This thing is, uh, oh, I'm opening the box by the way. This is a good bass cabinet microphone as well. You see this live all the time. This is like the standard kick drum microphone. Now how is it different from the D6? The D6 is, has, a, has kind of an EQ built into it. This one, uh, and that EQ is like more, more of a modern sound where it's scooped in the mids and then the highs are boosted and the, uh, not the highs, the, uh, the low ends boosted and the um, the point of the kick drum is boosted as well. That's what the D6 sounds like. This thing picks up everything, including mud. So you gotta EQ stuff out of it if you use it, but if you're going for more of a classic sound, um, it, it does sound better, and to me, in my opinion, it also sounds better on bass cadence, although I don't really like bass cadence anymore. I, I did a video about that, and uh, I don't know if I was just not using good bass cabinets or just I in that room they don't sound good. But regardless, I don't use bass. I don't mic bass cabinets anymore. So it's strictly a kick drum microphone at this point. I've shown you all of my standard studio microphones, but I would be lying to you if I didn't show you the other mics that I have um, for video production, which is my main uh, my main source of income. And uh, first of all, actually, let me just show you this. So this is a Sennheiser MKE-2 Gold. It's for wireless audio. And it's an omnidirectional condenser microphone. It sounds good. It's a standard. It can handle abuse. It can handle spit and rain and all kinds of like nasty moisture. It's a good, solid contender for best lav mic. Um, it looks good on camera because it's so small and you can hide it places. Um, the other mic I have, it came with the kit, which is the, I think it's just called the ME2, the Sennheiser ME2 microphone. And it's a backup in case this one breaks, which I haven't had that happen yet. But it's in there and I have it and it's a hundred bucks. So, you know, I would be remiss for for not uh, telling you about it. Finally, my King Lavalier microphone. I'm wearing it. I'm, I'm recording with it. I've been recording with it this entire video. Um, if I change where it is right now, it's gonna sound, eh, you know what? Let me just do it. So there it is. You might not be able to hear me well, but there it is. It's the one I use in Pretty much all the videos that I shoot when I'm sitting on camera. This is the Sankin COS 11 S BP. <laughs> you can't buy this new anymore. They, they've replaced it and now that's like the 11 D BP. But it's, it's, it's a better microphone. The, the, the DBP is better. Um, 
Oh, by the way, the Sennheiser mic cost. Um, I don't have my notes anymore. I, I lost my notes, but it's the Sennheiser MKE2 Gold is, is $370. Um, and then the Sankin is $460. Yeah, these uh these are pretty damn expensive mics. It comes with this case. Um, I'm not I'm gonna try to not lose this stuff. So it comes with the case. It comes with a clip and some kind of mount that I've never really used, and a windscreen that makes the mic sound like shit. So I never use that either. <laughs> um, if I can avoid it, but this mic. It's pretty much, I, I don't know if there's an, an, an ex, more expensive mic. Maybe there is somewhere. Um, but this is the most expensive lob mic that I own. It's the smallest one. It's the highest quality. And it, it comes highly recommended from sound guys in the Hollywood industry. That it sounds like a boom mic. So I ended up buying it. It was a huge purchase for me at the time. But I'm glad I got it. This mic kicks ass. I can use a AA battery to power it. I can use phantom power to, to power it. So on top of it being high quality, it also is, uh, is multifunctional in that aspect. And I have used the AA battery before uh, on a uh, recorder that did not have phantom power. So, um, you know, all in all, I'm happy with the purchase. Yes, it was a hell of a chunk out of my wallet, but... Um, you know, once you buy a nice piece of kit, you don't have to buy again. That's what I love about, you know, the, the better gear out there. It's like, once you get it, you don't have to buy a new one. You know, when I bought those MXL mics, I had to get them replaced. I, I had to buy better microphones. Um, so now all this gear that I have expensive, but collected over a long period of time. Um, Studio B started in 2007. So... You know, and I got a mic here, a mic there. So, you know, $4,500 sounds like a lot of money, but if you buy used, it's cheaper. And if you buy uh, if you buy it over a period of time, it's not that expensive. And if you're making money off of this, it's not that expensive either. But uh, I'm going to go before my memory card fills up. I know I'm, like, short on time now, but I hope you learned a lot. I, I showed you everything I have. I wish I had more. <laughs> Cause I'm a, I'm a mic slut, but, um, I got what I need to record good audio. Oh, AT4040. I forgot. We use it on cello as a, as a cello microphone. It's good for that upright bass. Same damn thing. Um, just make sure you put the low cut filter off. But besides that, I don't think I have any other things to say about these mics. If I, if I can think of something while I'm editing, I'll put that in at the end of this video. But for now, this has been Adam for Real Home Recording Premium. See you in the next video.